Alright guys, so right now we in my boy's dojo. That, this is what he calls it, the dojo. I'll show you guys the setup too in a different clip. So you guys know how people are always saying, I wish I learned this in school. I wish somebody took the time to educate us about this topic. Like how come we didn't learn about taxes? How come we didn't learn about the stock market? How come we didn't learn about money? We didn't have any financial classes. I got my backpack on because I'm going to take y'all to school today. Even if you're not a trader, right? This information is just something you should know. You guys should have access to this information. You know, if you guys do want to join the ATM traders, the link is going to be below. But this information, I feel like it should be available for everybody. So that's why I'm making this video. And I want to, you know, present somebody to you guys right now. This is a person that really put me on to trading. So it's awesome to have him in this video. He trades Forex. I trade options. When I knew nothing about the charts, he would sit down with me and explain things to me, you know? So I just want to say thank you, bruh, for having the patience. He's behind the camera right now. No this sure. boy right here, no sure, sure. Apollo. What I basically just wanted to make this video about is just giving guys the basics, giving you guys the things that I feel like you guys should know about the stock market, introducing you to these concepts if you haven't yet understood this information. So we're just going to start. Where, where should we start if you're teaching somebody who doesn't really know about technical analysis, which technical analysis, by the way, is understanding the charts, understanding, you know, the, when you guys see those candlesticks on the chart, when you see those bars, it's understanding that and making sense out of the charts. So where would you start for someone who looks at those charts and is like, nah, that's way too hard or nah, I, I don't, this is not for me. I always start, you got to start at the very core concept. Mm -hmm. So you got to start at the candles themselves. Okay. You know I mean? That's the very first thing that everything else builds upon mm -hmm. those very candles. You know what I mean? So I would start with the candles. All right. So you want to take it away for us and just introduce them to what these candlesticks mean real okay, quick. Okay. 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 Yeah, another candle right here. So what he just drew right here are three candles. Okay. These are three candles. Each candle represents a different type of like strength. I always talk about candles either being strong or being weak, right? And if you guys could tell right here, we have three different candles. Can you sort of explain to them like which ones are strong, which ones are weak, okay. and why? Like why is it a weak candle or why is it a strong candle? I'm gonna just start from strongest and then we're gonna go down to the weakest, you feel me? So the one in the middle is gonna be the strongest candle, why? Because I like to, you know, classify them as like bodies. We have a bigger body right mm -hmm. here, you feel me? Like, which party you want to go to? You want to go to the one that has the most bodies, you feel me? I feel that. That's how I like to explain it, you feel me? So, these other ones, they're not as lit as this one right here, you feel me? So, this one is the strongest. And the reason because, like, this body right here that we have right here is a lot bigger than these wicks that we have protruding from here. So, these lines that are protruding from these candles, these are what we call wicks. These are just showing us the lows and the highs for that data set. Every single candle, I don't want to get too deep into it, but they all have different time frames. So based on the time frame you were on, that is how long it took for this candle to close. So if I was on a daily time frame, it took me a day for this to close. You feel me? This was just the low, and this was the high. We'll get into, into deeper into that. All right, so basically what he's saying is that for this candle, right? right. Let's say we're on a one minute chart. So that means we're looking at data sets that are showing us the action of price that happen every one minute, right? There's one minute charts, five minute charts, 15 minute charts, an hourly chart, 30 minute charts, whatever. Like you guys can go daily, monthly, weekly. And what these candles will represent is what price did in that given amount of time. So if I'm on a five minute chart, all these candles right here will represent five minutes. If I'm on an hourly chart, all these candles right here will represent one hour, not together individually. So this would be one hour this would be one hour and this would be one hour okay if i'm on an hourly chart now what he's saying is the body of the candle is showing you where it opened during that hour and it mm -hmm. closed during that hour that's right yeah, yeah that's for sure. so let's say this is a green candle okay, okay. a well, green we candle we could maybe make the the red candles i guess blacked out black okay yeah, we can do that so this will be a red candle dang i should have took a coloring class <laughs> All right, this is going to be a red candle. And this, these two will make these two green candles. So these candles are going up. All right, so when you see a red candle, you guys got to understand that that means during that time that the price went down. That's correct. That's and if you see a green candle, that means during that time the price went up. 
All right, so look, what we're gonna go over right here is letting you know where the price opened and closed at, right? So could you sort of explain to them what this data set means, right? Like if we're looking at each candle, what does it mean? Let's pretend it's on the hourly chart. Right, so, so each candle say, is an hour. So actually write that one hour mm -hmm. time frame. We'll just, so all these candles took one hour to close, right? So if we went, once again, we're gonna count this as a seller's candle, which usually on the chart is gonna be red. That means we went down in price. So the open is always gonna be the top of that body. You feel me? So price basically started right here. We went as high as to this wick right here. Until sellers pushed in, we went as low as to here, but then we ended up closing right here at the bottom of the body. So I'm gonna just mark it for them right quick. So right here, we have our open. Right here, we have our close. Yes, sir. That's correct, right? Yes, sir, yes, sir. So the body is showing you the open and the close of the candle. And what are these wicks representing? These wicks are representing the highest point it went during that hour and the lowest point it went during that hour. So we're going to put low point and high point. So you guys see that the price opened right here. It went up to this high point, went all the way down to this low point, but then closed right here. All right, so that's the story that this candle is telling us. And you guys could already assume that for a green candle, which we're representing the green candles right here, you guys could assume what the story is for that. Yeah, so if the seller candles, we went down in price, what do we do for the buyer candles? We went up in price, you feel me? So the open and the close is now gonna be inverse, you feel me? So if I'm on the bar candle right here, the open is gonna start at the bottom right here, you feel me? We went as low as the down here, we had this low point right here. We shot up until we had some sellers come in and we ended up closing right here at the top of the body. That's the story of that buyer candle, you feel me? And then this candle right here, this is really just an honorable mention. This doesn't really count as an actual candle. We're gonna see this as an actual doji. This, this is more of an indecision candle because the open and the close is relatively close to one another and then you see the low and the high point. Like we went all the way to this high point, all the way to this low point, but our open and the close is so close to one another that we're not really counting this as enough data for us to make a move on. So these don't really count as candles that we're, we're worried about, you feel me? We wanna be where the bodies are at, you feel me? So we represent this, we call it an indecisive candle, right? So it's showing us that price didn't really know what it wanted to do, right? There is no strong close. So it's like, it's like this candle right here is not giving us enough information, all right? Mm -hmm. So we just went over candles for you, right? If you never understood candles and you always wondered like what they represent, now you guys know it represents the open close of that time frame and the highest and lowest point of that time frame. So next time you look at a candle, you should ask yourself, what time frame am I looking at? Gotcha. Am I looking at the five minute chart, the one minute chart, the hourly chart, right? And then you wanna ask yourself, where did this candle open at? Where did this candle close at? What was its highest point? Which is right, will be right here for this. And what was its lowest point? Which would be right here. So that's the sort of information that we're getting from candles, okay? What's another thing that you would go over to someone who's just completely oblivious to how the stock market works and when they look at the charts, they're like, oh, hell no. Nah. What okay. would you go over next? Now that they understand candles. I mean, now that they understand candles, you mm -hmm. just keep building up. You feel, me? you feel me? We gave you the training wheels. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to take this concept, we're going to build upon it. So, I mean, we are going to erase this, right? Yeah, I got you. you come on, use a bigger one. <laughs> 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 you can't, you can't blow it up, man. I'm supposed to trust you. <laughs> you got duct tape board, man. <laughs> you yeah, ain't ass, nobody bro. trusting no duct tape board. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting taped immediately, bro. Alright, bro. This shit. <laughs> crazy, bro. This is that shit, I wouldn't that. Hey, man, we, we in class, man. We in school. <laughs> Don't right, mind sure. the presentation. Yeah. Facts. No, worry about the information. Exactly. That's what you should be worried yeah, about, bro. Get it. She worried about the wrong mm -hmm. things, bro. Worried about the wrong things. See, all right. So look. So now we understand candles. So now we want to make sure that we have two body candles. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna say this is a seller's candle. Mm -hmm. And then right next to it, let's say we have a buyer's candle. Okay. So now with these, we're gonna say these are actual bodies. So there's two. All right. So remember, guys, we're representing this 
candle that's colored in as a red candle. On your chart, it's gonna look like a red candle. Nice. And on you know your chart, this candle that's not filled in, it's gonna be a green candle. All right, so that's how you guys are gonna get this representation. So. All right, so now right here, we have two candles next to each other. We, make, we know, first thing you wanna look at, are they actual candles? Are they strong candles? The wicks are actually smaller than the bodies themselves, so that means we actually have real body candles, you feel me? So we know it's lit right now, mm -hmm. you feel me? But now, we have a seller candle next to a buyer candle. How I like to explain it is we got two ops next to each other, so mm -hmm. there's a fight going on right now, you feel me? So I was that kid in high school, you feel me? I had the camera ready, I was recording all the fights, you feel me? So I want to know where the fights is at because all I got to see is who won the fight, you feel mm -hmm. me? So mm -hmm. it's just like, okay, we got sellers right here, we got buyers right here. Who is bigger, you feel me? Clearly the buyers are going to win that, you feel me? So the buyers won that. So that means this is what we call an engulfing pattern. So what that means is that the buyers engulf the sellers. We have more buyers than we had sellers. So that means the buyers are in control. So in a situation like this, I am very inclined to want to buy that market. I had to take off the book bag real quick. You know, things are heating up. This is getting serious because this is what it's about. Look, when you guys are looking at these green and red candles, okay, it's not just pictures. It's not just drawings on a chart. It's a literal fight. It's a fight between buyers and sellers. You guys got to understand that the stock market is a bidding war, right? Nice. It's people that are constantly fighting over what should the price of this stock be, you know? So you're going to have buyers step in at one point. You're going to have sellers step in at one point. And it's a fight between who's right, you know? So when you see things like this, when you see a seller candle, right? And it's smaller than this buyer candle. This is an engulfing like he just went over. He's telling you that the story of this right here is showing you that buyers are taking over and the stock could potentially shoot up, okay? Now, is it right 100% of the time when not, you see these? Not right 100% of the time. That's why we use other factors to actually look for this. But this would be the main confirmation mm -hmm. you use to enter the market, just so we know that our side and our bias is most likely in control. Okay, all right. So now they know how candlesticks work. Mm -hmm. They understand that candlesticks is a fight between buyers and sellers. Mm -hmm. What's one more, thing one more thing that you would like, you know, give them as a gem to help them understand these charts a little better? Okay. Uh, all right. Well, we have to raise this again. All right. Use some wavy, wavy candles, but that's right. cool. All okay, right. So look, basically what I'm looking at now, this is what you're going to be looking at on the charts, you feel me? Obviously, there's going to be a lot more candles. It's not going to look as clean as this. Sometimes it's going to look choppy. But all I need to do is make sure I understand how the charts work. So the more right you go, the more in the present we are, right? So this is present day. The more left I go, the more back in time we go. You feel me? Now, they always say that time repeats itself, history repeats itself, mm -hmm. right? So if I see that, okay, once again, these white candles are going to be our actual buyers. These black candles are going to be our sellers. If I see that, okay... In the past, people bought here, you feel me? I also see they kind of went here again too, right? I can draw, I like to draw boxes, but we'll just draw like a little zone right here. Okay. Draw a little zone right here. That so is. just for, for their sake, yeah. what, what does this zone represent again? You say okay. history likes to repeat itself. So yeah. what, what, is, what is this zone, you know, for? Like, why are you drawing this zone? Okay, so I'm drawing this zone because this zone represents where buyers like to pop in, where buyers pop in in the market, the trading term that we use is called support because in order to actually jump off the floor, what you need, you need a support, you need a foundation, right? You feel me? When, with these candlesticks, we're really just building a story, you feel me? So this is the foundation of the buyer story right now. I'm seeing, okay, buyers came in here, buyers came in here. I'm thinking, okay, if we come back down to this, I may see an engulfing and then from there, I would buy the market. And you so, see, what what type of stories are you putting together to really make that thesis? Um. Okay. So now I'm putting in two stories together. So uh, basically, everything we just learned so far, plus this new concept that we are putting in here. You feel me? New concept alert. You feel me? So we learned about candles. We know the candles. We know about and go things. We know about this. You feel me? I see that in the past, people bought here. People bought here. So now. Based on probability, I see that in the past is where people wanted to buy. I see that the buyers are currently winning right here based on this engulfing. All I want to do is, okay, bet I have two confirmations now that my bias of a buy is actually correct. All I got to do is buy that, and usually the market will shoot up any direction. You're not going to be around 100% of the time. But this is how we increase our probability and stay in the game and make as much money as possible. Interesting. That's interesting, 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 interesting. Yeah. So if you are someone that was fresh, didn't understand this, I feel like this video would help. 
you know, of course, if you're an experienced trader and you already understand about the charts and things like that, you know, this was simple, simple, easy stuff to you. Like you probably already know this stuff, but I really just wanted to shed light on, you know, the charts and technical analysis to people who look at it and just think it's out of reach to understand because I know I did. I used to look at the stocks and be like, oh, nah, yeah, only nice. only geniuses do that. Man. Nice. Like, and now it's just something where you look at and you're able to build upon these stories that he just, you know, illustrated. You're able to look at it and see the fight between the buyers and sellers and really get a concept in your mind of what can happen next. Now, I do want to say that you're not right all the time. Right? No, That's not, facts. Yeah, you're not right all the time. That's where things like risk management comes into play. That's where things like, you know, just being aware of like your thoughts and just understanding that you could I, I say it like this i say trading is like driving a car right it's like driving a car if you want to you can crash the car like you can total the whip That's but nice. you want to make sure you know you're a good driver you're in control and you want to make sure that you just try to get to your destination and make it home right whether it's a win or a loss you just want to get to your destination all right if you guys are new to the markets i hope this helps out you know give my dog Apollo yep. all the you know thank thank him thank him don't even thank me for this video because he's the one that put me on I want you guys to check out his channel guys he has a great channel anyone that trades Forex you know this is a guy that's really good on the charts understanding technical analysis now I do want to put this disclaimer out here is there millionaire traders out there that are probably making millions right that are better than us yes nice. but all we're doing is providing a place to learn and break things down that works for us right all those YouTube videos of like people breaking this down to me, it just wasn't registering until, you know, I broke it down my own way. And that's what I sort of provide nice. in the discourse. That's what he provides. He had to break nice. it down to me in a way that I, you know, felt it and understood. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say thank you, bro. Thank you Appreciate for helping it. out with this video. Appreciate it. And, you know, like I said, if you guys are Forex traders, or if you guys just want to learn more about technical analysis, go check out his channel. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we're out. Ooh, why school doesn't teach you this? The stock market. How to make money. The secret of being rich. Mm, how to how to make money trading. Mm -hmm. Why school doesn't teach you this?